when we talk about like success as as human beings, you know, like like the things that make us successful, like of course intelligence is helpful, and of course talent is useful, but you can be the smartest, most fucking talented guy in the world, and that doesn't mean shit unless you've got enthusiasm. Enthusiasm is the most important fucking ingredient to success, period, ever. Because, like, enthusiasm is the engine that fucking drives, like, real shit. And get yeah. a load of this, how heavy this is. The actual <laughs> word enthusiasm, when you break it down for, I think it's Greek or Latin roots... Like enthusiasm, it uh, comes from en theos, which means with God. When you're fucking enthusiastic, you're doing God's work. That's the best fucking work you can do. That's when I do my fucking best work. When I'm doing fucking God's work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and that's what I, that's for me, God's work is fucking shove shit up my ass and breaking bones on a yeah. home video camera. <laughs> How did that all come up? Like, how did that all come together? Though, like, how did you meet? Like, how did Knox the, uh, and Wee Man it was and skateboarding. That? You know, I was like, going to say it was a true skateboard. Lad, some of these skateboards are sick, by the way. Yeah, thanks. Man. <laughs> I gotta give you one of those Noxo ones. We're, we're uh, you, you can't get those now. They're sick, lad. Um, all the, for uh, sale, yeah, people. I mean, with, like, like I said, the skateboard introduced me to the video camera, and and I loved skateboarding. I really did, and um. That's like what the, the thing about Jackass, and I made a video called uh, The Birth of Jackass, according to me, is just sort of my personal like eight minute documentary about how the, about the origins of Jackass, and, and uh, I'm, it's on my YouTube channel, and I'm like fiercely proud of, of that video. But it, it's really a story of skateboarding. And um, back in the days of America's Funniest Home Videos, um, when the video camera was not a household item, not everybody had it. Like the people who did gravitate to the video camera were skateboarders. Yeah, and that's because, like the the nature of skateboarding, it's skateboarding was the only activity that lent itself to uh, to to video. Like if you wanted to be a, a fighter. And succeed at fighting, then win fights. You know, it's almost yeah. like it's not necessary to present a sponsor me video of you fighting. It's yeah. like you've got your record that represents your your you know your uh, track record. You know, and almost anything else is the same way. Like, you know, but skateboarding. Every fucking skateboarder was took to documenting their skateboarding so that they could present a video to try to get sponsors. Yeah, they understand what you mean. So that puts skateboarders way ahead of the entire rest of the population as far as video production goes. Yeah. Skateboarders became movie directors. Like Spike Jones, Oscar fucking winning Academy Award fucking movie director, his first video project was a skateboard video. So then, and he wasn't, was even, he, he, he wasn't even supposed to be the one to make it. He was a photographer for a skateboard company. <laughs> and the, 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 the owner of the company decided he wanted to make a video because he wanted to get in on, get in on this because videos were what was selling the products. Yeah. He's like, I need a fucking video. Who's going to make it? And he's like, fucking, he didn't have anyone. So Spike Jones got the job to make the rubbish heap video by default because there was no one else to do it. And, uh, and that's just an example of how skateboarders were ahead of the curve. And the other thing about skateboarding videos was that even for a skateboarder, it was just too monotonous. It became monotonous to watch an hour of just skateboarding. You know, <laughs> yeah. like... It would, it would, it would, it would, just trick after trick after trick after just, trick. It, yeah, it would become kind of mind-numbing. As would, you say, you need to have a little bit of personality. You know? Right. Yeah, you got to have personality and what, like, like even more, you got to have comic relief. So skateboarding videos, and particularly after that one that Spike Jones made, like we, we saw eh, before that with the Powell videos, there was, um, th you know, there were like little breaks, little vignettes, yeah. you know, vignettes of like fucking just wild, crazy 
to just break up the monotony of the of all the tricks. Yeah. And um, recognizing that I wasn't that good at skateboarding, that I would become a pro, I that was where when I said I'm going to become a crazy famous stuntman, I kind of made it my my goal to be in skateboarding videos providing that comic relief yeah you know providing that fun you with the bloopers falling off the skateboard yeah. i mean i was setting myself on fire fucking Whoa. throwing myself off bridges fucking like <laughs> drinking bong water i would do anything in the fucking world to get into a skateboarding video and just not be riding a skateboard and i pulled that off so <laughs> That was how I got my career started, was by by being featured in skateboard magazines and skateboard videos, just doing bonkers at it. Yeah. And the guy who made the who owned the company that Spike Jones made the video for, this guy was fucking out of his mind. His name was Steve <laughs> Rocco, right? And like he uh, he would promote his fucking company, World Industries, like in just insane ways and like he didn't give a fuck and and, and like the way that it, outside of the skateboarding videos like it was um, there was Thrasher Skateboard Magazine and Transworld yeah. so Steve Rocco is like putting these crazy fucking ads in the skateboard magazines and he comes up with this one where it's a fucking kid holding a gun to his head and it says like kill yourself world industries that's the ad and like and, and Thrasher and Transworld, both magazines, sent that fucking ad with the kid and the gun back to Steve Rocker. They said, there's no fucking way we're running this. Like, this is offensive to us. We're not going to run it. And, like, and, and like we're offended. And, and, and thank you very much. Like, you can have that back. That's not going in our magazine. Yeah, that's a crazy idea. Yeah, though. and Steve Rocker being the way that he was, he was like, oh, yeah, you know, you don't like my ad. Mm, well, fuck you. I'm going to... Can have he says, you know what? Fuck you. I don't need you. That he says, I'm gonna start my own magazine. So that was why he started Big Brother Magazine, was just to serve as a forum for naughty filth that Thrasher and Transworld would never allow in its pages. <laughs> and and, uh, and yeah, Big Brother Magazine was born, and Big Brother was the fucking craziest shit, and I loved it so much. And I made it my I made it my fucking job in life to be in Big Brother magazine, uh, and um, so like so they made these videos, and their videos were loaded with the craziest comic relief. You had Johnny Knoxville shooting himself with a fucking thirty-eight caliber handgun, just firing a bullet into a bulletproof vest that he's wearing. The gun goes flying and shit like shit like that, <laughs> and uh, and these Big Brother videos became like kind of like cult shit. And then Bam was doing the same thing with CKY, but like you know Knoxville and and Jeff Tremaine, who was the editor in chief of Big Brother magazine, it was like they're like, dude, the, the, we're onto something with this Big Brother. Shit. People are people are fucking yeah, tripping. people are lapping it Pe up. People are tripping over the crazy. That we're putting in these Big Brother videos, and none of them give a fuck about the skateboarding. So they reached out to Spike Jones. They said, "Spike, dude, um, everybody like like our Big Brother videos are becoming really fucking popular, and we think uh, that that if we were to just just lose the skateboarding, just yeah. take away the skateboarding and just the crazy shit, like we think that could be a TV show." So when they took out the skateboarding, what was left over was Steve-O and Knoxville and Free <laughs> Man, and, and they just made a tape and took it to and the networks and the MTV. That was how Jack got started. That's that's unbelievable, you know. It's a rad story. It is. That's why that's why I like that birth of Jackass video. That uh, really is an, an unbelievable story, that.